Good morning and welcome to another of our online services here uh, for where well, we're in Second Kilroy Presbyterian Church, but they're online services for Second Kilroy and for, for Money Dyke Presbyterian Churches. I'm Stuart Morrow, I'm minister of both congregations. Uh, and, and on behalf of the, the congregation in Kirk Session, can I welcome you and thank you for uh, choosing to, to, to watch this morning. We are delighted to have you with us. Uh, and regardless as to what congregation you belong to, whether it's Presbyterian or, or, or some other denomination or no, no congregation at all, no church connection, um, you are very welcome and we pray that we know God's presence and blessing as we worship him together, even though we are apart. A few announcements. Um, we're recording here on, on Thursday the 17th of September and the Kirk Session at Money Dig met last night uh, and we have agreed uh, to put plans in place to, to reopen our, our Sunday School, our Bible class and our, and our Youth Fellowship uh, along with the Children's Church on a Sunday morning. Uh, we will of course be in touch with all of the, the leaders uh, of these organisations to, to finalise those plans and to, to work out how this will work. Uh, and as soon as that is in place, we will let you know the, the details. So please do pray uh, for those leaders as they try to, to bring another degree of normality back to our, our church life. As far as Second Kilray is concerned, the Kirk Session have met um, and we are hoping uh, to, to aim for a the date of the, the third Sunday in, in October, I think that's the 18th of October off the top of my head, uh, as the date in which we, we reopen the church. Now, of course, we will keep an eye on the news and, and if anything changes, we will let you know. But that is our hope, that on the eight, Sunday, the 18th of October, that the congregation of Second Kilray would reopen. So, so please do pray, give thanks to God for, for that, uh, that decision. Uh, but also pray for the Kirk Session uh, and committee ahead of that as they put uh, final touches to, to what's needed to open the church uh, again. A reminder that Money Day continues to be open each Sunday morning at 12 noon and if you, you want to come along then please book your place by contacting Stephen Torrance. His contact details are on our website www.moneydeg.org.uk um, and uh, you will be most welcome on a Sunday morning. And then finally, our committee in Money Dig meets on Wednesday at 8 p.m. In John 10, verse 14, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. We stand together as we sing a paraphrase uh, of, of Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd.
continue to, to worship God and come before him in prayer this morning, we take the opportunity to use some silence to bring our own prayers before God. Let's pray. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Heavenly Father, we praise you this morning because of all the good things you have given us. We live in a place where even the poor have more than the poorest in our world. We thank you for our families, for those who support us during hard times. Thank you for our church family, the freedoms we enjoy. Thank you for Christ, the, the security of how he adopts us into your family through the cross. Thank you for forgiveness. And in the silence, we offer you our thanks. even though I walk through the darkest valley. Father, we praise you for your presence, the hope of an end to the darkness, despair, hopelessness. Thank you for the hope of a new beginning, new life, fulfilled life. And in the silence, we thank you for your presence and that promise of new life. You anoint my head with oil. Father, we thank you for the blessings we have in Christ, for forgiveness. Thank you for the anointing of your spirit, your equipping in our lives. Thank you for the foretaste of what is come, what is to come, for all who believe in Christ. And in the silence, we ask you for the anointing of your spirit. our prayers we offer. In Jesus' name. Amen. We turn to, to God's Word and to the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 34. I, I would encourage you to read the whole of this chapter, but we are only going to read the first 12 verses now. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 1 to 12. The Word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, Prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to you, shepherds of Israel, who only take care of yourselves. Should not the shepherds take care of the flock? Ye eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool, and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak or healed those who are ill or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally so that they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth, and no one searched or looked for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, because my flock lacks a shepherd, and so has been plundered and has become food for all the wild animals, and because my shepherds did not search for my flock, but cared for themselves rather than my flock. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against the shepherds and will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tending the flock. So the shepherds can no longer feed themselves. I will rescue my flock from their mouths. 
and it will no longer be food for them. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Make us, make us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From lying is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord prayer. I absolutely love it. In scripture, the word shepherd, when, when used in this context, is someone who has responsibility for people rather than sheep. It usually refers to, to kings and leaders. And so whenever Ezekiel turned to the shepherds of Israel, he had the, the kings of Judah in mind, the, the leaders, those in authority and with responsibility for the people. Whenever we take this on board, then the natural application of this passage of scripture is to people like me, to, to Kirk Session, to, to committee, those who are in positions of, of leadership in our congregation, whether they be elected leaders or appointed leaders. Ezekiel is talking to us. Of course, this doesn't mean that the rest of us can simply switch off. The reality is that each of us will have responsibility for someone, whether it's family, friends, colleagues, neighbours, a Sunday school class, a campaigner group, children's church classes. Each of us are shepherds of someone. And while Ezekiel may have primarily had Israel's leaders in mind, we all have responsibilities in this matter. Increasingly today, we want to know who is to blame. And as the government struggles with, with COVID-19 tests, we're not really that interested in how to fix the problem. We just want to know who's to blame, whose fault it is, so that we can say it was his responsibility. And in chapter 34, Ezekiel is answering the question, who is to blame? He's pointing the finger at the people God held responsible for the exile in Babylon, the shepherds, the leaders of Israel. 
The role of the shepherd was to protect and to strengthen the weak, to heal the ill, to, to bind up the injured, to bring back strays, to, to look for those who were lost. And in Ezekiel 34 verse 4, we're told quite plainly that this wasn't happening. Ezekiel said, you have not strengthened the, or the weak or healed those who are ill or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. In plain English, the shepherds were to care for the people, for their physical and their spiritual needs. Last week we, we talked about how Jesus expected his church to care for the sick, to visit those in prison, to, to feed the hungry. The, the role of the shepherd was to point to how the spiritual life of Jerusalem, the, the corporate and, and individual worship in that city, how it had gone astray. Idols, greed, lack of adherence to the law of God. The shepherd was to draw the people back to God and away from those things that would only bring harm. But they failed in every respect. Jerusalem was awash with poverty, hunger, nakedness. And the leaders who were not poor hungry or naked. They, they did nothing to, to alleviate the hardships. Jerusalem was filled with idolatry, a lack of faithfulness to God and the, the leaders, instead of setting an example of repentance, encouraged idolatry in all of its forms. At the heart of what Ezekiel is talking about is the question, what is pastoral care and, and how should that care be provided? Which is why this is so much a question for, for people like me, like Kirk Session. But as we said, we not exclusively because we all have some responsibilities. We all have some pastoral responsibilities. The good news in all of this is that despite my many failures and, and any failures which may have been on the part of Kirk Session now or, or in the past is that God himself has promised that he will take on the role of the shepherd of his people. In Ezekiel 34, 15 we read, I myself will tend my sheep and make them lie down declares the sovereign Lord. So traditionally in the Presbyterian Church in Ireland, our, our expectation for pastoral care is that we would be visited in our homes, in hospital, in prison even. We expect to be cared for in, in difficult times such as funerals. We, we expect the church to celebrate with us through baptism, communicant membership and weddings. And I think a, an honest and a fair assessment of how successful we have been is that at times we have done well. But it's important to say there have always and also been times when we, whenever I, ha haven't done so well. And for that I offer my sincere apologies to, to anyone who has not felt loved or cared for. But I think it's also important to say that pastoral care has become more difficult to deliver in today's circumstances. But I want to assure everyone that the Kirk session takes this incredibly seriously. They, they discussed, it, discussed it at their session meeting on, on Wednesday night. It's been a regular item on their agenda for quite some time. And we will continue to work hard at trying to provide as much care as we possibly can. 
But just as Kirk's session are involved in an honest look at how we deliver pastoral care, and I know way want to, to deflect from that, but we as a congregation need to think through our expectation of what pastoral care is. Or maybe more importantly, we need to, to think through what God expects from our pastoral care. And as we read Ezekiel 34, we see that God is concerned for the practical needs of his people. He promises to rescue them, to feed them, to provide water, to bring peace and security. These are the basic requirements of life. But, but Ezekiel also points us to a God who will provide medicine and care for those who are in need. This speaks of the sort of thing the church used to do very well. At, at one time, we built hospitals and schools. And when God talks about pastoral care for his people, he's, he's talking about, on one level, meeting some incredibly basic needs. This means that we, as a church, should be ensuring that every person gets the education they need and the medicine they need. We should be concerned about the safety of every person fighting against discrimination and injustice. We should be concerned about mental health, transport links, everything that contributes towards a fair and basic standard of life for everyone. Think this through as, as some food for thought when Ezekiel talks about shepherds only taking care of themselves and not the flock in 34 verse 2, what would he say to, to our church committee, for example? Now remember, I'm part of that committee, so, so I'm talking to myself here. I'm not just our church committee, most church committees. Whenever we pour, pour so much in terms of our resources into buildings, so many people in the world have so little. Pastoral care is about how we use our resources. But God also uses Ezekiel to speak about social and, and relationship issues as part of pastoral care. In verse 17, Ezekiel talks about God judging between the fat and the lean sheep. And this, this addresses issues of greed and selfishness. Ezekiel uses the image of, of some sheep trampling the pastures and, and muddying the waters for other sheep. He talks about bullying and abuse of power and position with, with the images of one sheep butting and pushing with the flank and the shoulder. When God administers pastoral care, he is challenging us about how we treat one another. And if we fail to respond to that challenge, he will judge us according to how we have treated each other. In our demand for ever more pastoral care. As a minister and a member of Kirk Session responsible for delivering some of that care, are we willing to be subject to and administer a level of care that says that we must stop the family fighting? Am I willing to make clear that, that part of pastoral care is being told that, that sometimes we are the people who need to apologise, to back down, to lose face, to help the weaker brother or sister? This has huge implications for how we invite the church to speak into our lives. Will the family that has fallen out or the friends that no longer speak be happy to be told that they and not the other party must apologise and repent? Is this the pastoral care we long to receive? Or is this the care we're willing to give as a Kirk Session, as a minister, as a committee, as a youth leader, or whatever else we are? Are we 
be willing to provide this level of care. At the heart of Ezekiel's complaint, of course, was the shepherd's refusal to, to seek the Lord. And of course, we know Ezekiel is not talking about people who don't know where they are. He's talking about people who have lost their way as far as their relationship with God is concerned. And as we talk about pastoral care, are we as leaders willing to ask the difficult question, how is it with your soul? As people who want to receive that pastoral care, are we willing to engage with that question and to answer it honestly? Practical care, making sure we have what we need for life, social care, being challenged about our relationships with one another, spiritual care, challenged with our relationship to God. In all of Ezekiel's criticism, he made clear that because of the shepherd's failure, that God himself would shepherd his people. Ezekiel points to a descendant of David who would return to the throne, which pointed not only to the hope of a return to Jerusalem, but ultimately points to Jesus. And Jesus went even further, describing himself as the good shepherd. We read it at the very outset of this service. He is the one who brings all pastoral care to fulfillment. To those who are struggling with oppression and poverty, he promises a time when justice will rule. When all our needs will be provided for. To those who struggle with broken relationships. He will bring an end to all strife as the lion lies down with the lamb. Admittedly, these promises are made while we are still in Babylon, while we struggle with exile, while we live through the hurt and the pain, while we try to manage with all of the imperfections of the care that I and people like me offer. Yet Jesus' promise is that he will overcome all of that. And he does it through the cross. Because at the cross, our spiritual relationship with God is healed. And it's because of that healing that our understanding of, of all the other aspects of care fall into place. It's because our relationship with God is healed that we can look forward to and see the day when our relationships with one another are healed, when our poverty will end and we inherit all the riches of the kingdom of heaven. Pastoral care, physical, social and spiritual made perfect through the work of Christ on the cross, will we receive and administer the care he offers to each of us?
come before him to, to pray for others. And, and as we pray, we use the, the refrain, grant them the comfort of your presence. Show us what it is to love in your name. Let's pray together. Loving God, you are always looking to respond to our needs, constantly reaching out to touch our lives with your love. Yet all too often we fail to seek the help that you long to give us. We trust in our own strength. We try this, that and, and everything else and we only remember you when we reach the end of our tether and there's no one left to turn to. Forgive us for relegating you to the periphery rather than putting you at the centre of our lives. Forgive us for treating you as a last resort instead of a first time recourse. Teach us to bring our needs to you knowing that though you may not always respond as we want you to, that you will provide for our needs. That you will grant us peace and bring us to that wholeness you alone can give. This morning we pray for those who are broken, who feel unloved, unwanted, unnoticed. Grant them the comfort of your presence. Show us what it is to love in your name. We pray for those who are in pain, who carry burdens no one else knows about, who, who wonder how life can ever go on, Grant them the comfort of your presence and show us what it is to love in your name. We bring before you those who are in trouble, who face disciplinary procedures at work, who face bankruptcy, who have received court summonses. Grant them the comfort of your presence and show us what it is to love in your name. And this we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen.